Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayona 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. to get a mattress like a mattress pad or at least you know like yeah. a quilted cover yeah like a quilted mattress cover or something. yeah because and i'll sew it i can feel this i yeah. can feel the joint here because i'm pushing down on it right yeah. at the edge when so i'm I on my shoulder we have that that'll help that when i'm on my back it's not so bad but i'm not allowed to sleep on my back because i snore too much all right so sorry about the i'm sure the auto audio is not great and the video is also not great this is just on my cell phone because it was handy so I'm just giving an update on the mattress topper, the cover that's gonna go over our mattress. This is the toe along this edge. The toe of our V-berth is 30 inches. So what I did is I just found the center, marked off 15 inches both directions, then measured up to about our shoulder area. That's how far the cut's gonna go up. And then it's gonna go straight. Our cushion, our, our mattress actually goes up and then it goes in and then up and then in again. But we don't need that. It, this'll be fine, I think. Cause straight sheets, we use straight sheets right now and they fit fine. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this up this way and then straight and then along the top. It's already, I didn't undo that, it's already sewn. And we're gonna do that on, on both sides. So what I did was, like I said, I measured to 30 inches on the bottom, 15 on each side. And then I just laid my straight edge down, uh, which is two inches wide, and marked the outside of it, kind of give me a, a good allowance for my hem. And the hem is going to look, it's not going to look as nice as this, but it's going to look like this. I'm going to have to zigzag the edges like that. And then I'm gonna have to sew the actual hem there. So it's, this is kind of the elastic -y piece, plus the top, plus the filling, which is coming out, and then the bottom piece. So I'm gonna capture all those together and sew along the edge. And I'm just gonna run this along this edge. That'll be my new cut edge. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm probably gonna have to cut this in half, sew the pieces together, and then finish sewing it around because this is probably going to be too long by the time I get around to the bottom. So that's the plan, and we'll see how it goes. That's it over there. Uh, basically have it sewn together, and it's just a nightmare. This was terrible. I don't know that it's going to fit. Um, I think I'm gonna have to service my machine. I think it's probably clogged up with some of the fuzz. It's everywhere, and so now I gotta clean up. All right, and then, and then here it is all done. So, I think it's a little too big. I don't. I really don't like this stuff. It's not elasticy enough. So I'm gonna get some clips that I can stick underneath and hook the corners together. And I think that'll hold it in place better. But uh, I definitely don't feel the seams anymore. Yeah, so in the shed, it was in the box in its Lumar packaging. And it had the, uh, it was sitting on a glass table. And underneath it, stuff started catching on fire and burning. And what had happened is it had melted up. And like, so from the bottom up. So the bearing cages are in good shape. Yeah, it didn't but... burn. This didn't burn. <laughs> right. So it had a plastic sleeve. I had to cut this thing off the main shaft to get it. Uh, but this thing, it basically just started going and melting downward. Um, the bearing. Oh yeah, you can see it's all melted right there. Well, these are these are the two gear spindle shafts. They had actually started puddling down like this. So I got some plastic bushings and 
put the winch back together crap and uh, you know it comes with various little sleeves and bushings and it's literally like half as long as the this one so basically what I ordered this ten dollar piece of plastic is uh, half as much as I need these bushings here these ones that got a little melty here they're half the size or half the height of the ones that come in the bushing kit it has an exploded diagram this is right off Lumar's website lumar.com it doesn't even show it shows the little plastic bushings it actually shows two of them in each spindle gear it doesn't show the plastic sleeve on this and this is this is kind of a broad spectrum it's size 30 40 45 50 so all the pieces and parts are what they are but it would have been nice if they just said you need two of these to finish a shaft so oh well I and mean, I'll figure it out. I don't know. Well, to be continued. Yeah, for sure. All right. I still... All right. So after another week, I got the uh, main shaft bushings delivered, and these are the uh, these are the ones that melted. It takes two of them to fit up inside this thing. So I got a couple of spares also. So these get pushed in from the bottom, and they f go all the way shoved up. There's a shoulder that stops stops them from going any further and that's what this uh the main shaft gear spins on Ooh, can you grab that what is holding this thing up Hold on. yeah that doesn't matter i just thought this would slide out a little bit there we go Plate I need to get to. It all looks so shiny. No, no. That backing plate's not gonna fit. Actually, I think it will. I'll just, oh, I'll no. just drill it. I also found this one in the shed from the one I took off on the. Uh, but the holes side. aren't in the right spot. No, absolutely not. Yeah. But I would stagger them and run them in between, and it wouldn't matter. Okay. Or I can do the same thing with this one. You say so. This one only has five bolt holes as well because it's a two speed so it has a secondary gear right here that you can't twist that one right off oh yeah Mila. let's put this thing down on top there it is beautiful Beauty, beautiful. Beautiful. That's mine. You can't use my thing. Let's say update on the closet. It's not tape. The epoxy didn't take. There's too much water in the core. I tried to drill out and pot the coring uh, in between the stanchion holes, in between the two de deck skins, and uh, it started as the epoxy was curing and the sun got onto that side of the deck in the afternoon. It was just like water was just bubbling up. And it started turning the epoxy cloudy, and the epoxy didn't really stick. So I gotta add do something. I need to flood it with acetone. Acetone will suck the moisture out as it evaporates. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to. I've got like uh, paper towels in there trying to wick out the moisture right now. That seems about right. So I put this here, kind of like this. I kind of put the gears uphill, just okay. so if I ever have to pull them, they won't just go spilling out over the slope deck. Anyway, these are where I got to drill the holes. Drilled the new footprint for the new winch and hogged out all the coring uh, at each of the winch holes. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see where I created a little bench in there and I'm going to, I'm going to tape these holes off and fill them with the boxy now. And then tomorrow I can drill them out and mount the hardware. There's five bolts on this, uh, winch base two of the holes lined up with the backing plate so i'm going to use them with a couple of flat washers and i'm just wing nutting it down just to lock it in place so i can uh, drill the other three holes all right so i spotted a couple of holes with the uh 
with the bit. One right there, one right here, this one right here. These two are the ones I'm going to reuse for the new Lumar. I'm going to use a couple of flat washers for the two holes right here and then just plug these ones. All right, let's drill these things out. <clears throat> I got an 11 64ths drill bit because it's one size bigger than a quarter inch. And I'm going to try something I've seen before on the internet, lubing it with WD-40. Usually I use cutting oil, but uh, yeah, that all burned up in the shed. Uh, did manage to save a countersink bit. So it's a three flute I got from McMaster and it was like freaking 18 bucks. So. I'm going to use this to just chamfer the new holes. Three new holes. So I did a little countersinking on the pad and put butyl tape around the bolts that are going to hold the winch down. Basically that's, that's all there is to it. Now just install the backing plate and the nuts. All right, and I just want to add a little bit of tough gel on the bottoms of the threads. Just a little bit of anti-seize kind of. All right, give it a butyl a couple of days to relax and I'll uh, tighten it down a little bit more as it squeezes out, but that's pretty much it. cushions we're doing them actually short we're not going to cover the whole cockpit in cushions rich picked this out um this color is very close to the binnacle cover that i made so we kind of thought it would look nice you can't blame me for picking this color i didn't blame you i was giving you credit <laughs> there's a difference <laughs> <laughs> 